Hey everybody, Mark Fox here with Amazing Prophecies YouTube channel, Forever Free Ministries, coming to you from Dallas, Texas. All right, we are racing toward the 2020 national presidential election for the next president of the United States of America. The suspense is rising, prayers are going up from both sides, and most will agree that the stakes could not be higher. Those who are reading and studying end time biblical prophecies know for sure that we are living in the last days and that the United States is the pace setter for the world. The world looks to the United States to lead the way. America is the sole remaining superpower, the strongest, the wealthiest, but something is different about this election. Remember, everything is connected. Everything is leading up to something biblical, prophetic, of uh, final events of verse history. We must watch the daily news updates of the 2020 election with the lens of Bible prophecy. I love this great country, but according to the book of Revelation, we were warned about the troubling future of the United States of America. That and more, stay tuned. Okay, everybody, just before we dive into this very provocative current events topic, I want to get this book, Mark of the Beast, into your hands. All you need to do is simply click on the link below. Blockbuster book, Mark of the Beast. You need every single person here should uh, to get this book. You want to read it. A donation is appreciated but not required. If you can stand with us this month, we appreciate it. Okay, so... Also, Forever Free Ministries School of Evangelism in the Philippines. Want to know more about that or want to give us your prayer requests or request a church uh, near you that is preaching what we are preaching on our channel, including the Bible Sabbath. Amazing Prophecies. Just email us. AmazingProphecies at gmail.com. AmazingProphecies at gmail.com. Also, join our Facebook group, Memorizing God's Word Together. Another um, Facebook group we have is called The Joy of the Sabbath. The Joy of the Sabbath. You can call for prayer requests at 833-211-4878. Um, also, you can text us. Text the word BIBLE to the number 74121. And you can get a link to an online, free online Bible course. Also, receive a link to a church preaching what we are uh, near you. All right, let's keep going, everybody. So a house divided cannot stand. We are racing toward that special date in November. Our country is still the sole remaining superpower, most powerful, wealthiest, but I think most of us can agree that all is not well. Abraham Lincoln declared, and this was before he became president in 1858, he declared, a house divided against itself cannot stand. He said, I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. I do not expect the union to be dissolved. I do not expect the house to fall, but I do expect it will cease to be divided. It will become all one thing or all the other. He was quoting from Jesus in Mark 3, 24 to 25. If Jesus spoke, he said these words, if a kingdom is divided, that's the word divided, that's the key word as we focus on this very provocative subject. If a kingdom is divided against itself, and that would apply to the United States, that applies to every one of our hearts. If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided, and that would include even our families, if a house is divided against itself, that, cannot, that house cannot stand. And so righteousness, the wise man Solomon said, righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Proverbs 14, verse 31. And David said, pardon me, Isaiah said, with my soul, I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me, I will seek you early. Watch this. For when your judgments, God's judgments, are in the earth, the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness. I mean, just look at the signs of the times all around us. God's judgments are falling upon 
um, mankind here in the last days. Signs of the times are all around us. So what do we do at this time here in America? When I shut up heaven and there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence, like COVID-19, send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and do what? Pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. This is what we need in America. Turn back to God, get down on our knees, come to the foot of the cross, surrender ourselves to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then we can see great things. This is the time not only to vote, but to pray for our country, not only praying for our country, but for our families, and not only our families, but for ourselves. Okay, so this election, I believe the stakes could not be higher. And so many are concerned about the direction of our country, the United States of America. It seems that our country, the United States of America, is so dangerously divided in many different ways and that everything is connected and everything is leading up to more end time signs being fulfilled. Indeed, majority of Americans have little or no trust in the government, president, U.S. Congress, U.S. Supreme Court, little confidence, little confidence. Democrats, Republicans, even police. Many uh, don't believe in uh, funding police now these days, it seems, at least some. Uh, mass media, distrust of mass media, distrust of even the United States uh, Post Postal Service, uh, the World Health Organization, CDC, or United Nations. There's so much distrust, and this really is dividing our country, this distrust brings division. You know, Thomas Jefferson said in 1807, he said, government is the strongest of which every man feels himself a part. In other words, look here, we are divided politically. We know that. That's not the primary concern. The primary concern is when we feel that our government is not paying attention to us. When the average person feels that the government is not really for them. And so Thomas Jefferson said, government is the strongest of which every man feels himself a part. And of course, one way to be feel like you have a part in that is go ahead and share what you believe by voting. All right, let's keep going. So that we know, there's debate, questions, fighting and arguing over masks. I mean, people are arguing over masks. People are arguing over vaccines. People are arguing over social distancing, arguing over quarantine, arguing over open or closed schools, public places, churches, etc. So there's a lot of arguing and fighting and debating and questions. And here, the CNN brawl erupts on airplane over masks. Yes, airline passengers enter into a brawl over seats and masks. Well, that's not an isolated situation, I'm sure. So what is happening to the political climate of America? Are we witnessing the demise of our, demise of our great country? The Atlantic article America is now the divided republic the framers feared. John Adams worried that a division of the republic into two great parties is to be dreaded as the great political evil. And that's exactly what has come to pass. So who will occupy the White House for the next four years? Donald Trump or Joe Biden? Joe Biden, Democratic convention speech. He just uh, delivered his uh, convention speech. I, after listening, to Joe Biden's Democratic Convention speech entirely, it is clear to me that his key word was united. That is his key word. And the 2020 Republican National Convention is just a short ways away. Pressure on Trump rises before the convention. Now, it is normal to have close presidential races with the country split almost evenly among Democrats and Republicans. That's normal. But what is troubling is the temperature 
of the disagreements and debates of not only the political candidates, but millions and millions of Americans. We are witnessing, I believe, a historic political polarization of our country that is of grave concern. And the mainstream media is constantly fanning into flames the rhetoric, the tone, the hostilities uh, here in America. The social media is also stoking the fires of hatred and anger toward those who have opposing views. This is what's dividing our country the most, not just political affiliation, but the anger, the hostility, division within parties. There are extremes on both sides of the Democrats, and there's those that are at the left, and then those who are the extreme left. There's those who are on the right, the Republicans, and to the far right. And so there's even division within parties. Wall Street Journal article, Joe Biden united the Democrats. It's not likely to last. The DNC is rallying around Joe Biden in hopes of defeating Trump. But the party's progressive wing is energized and centrists claim a broad mandate. That means the internal battle over what the Democrats stand for will continue no matter the result in November. So in other words, they're saying not even the Democrats are all going to be united. And so is our country divided? Does our country desperately need healing from our anger and hostility towards one another? Do we need to be more civil, more courteous, more kind, more patient? 77%, 77%, this is in christianheadlines.com, 77% of conservatives keep their views private due to political climate, poll shows. So look here, everybody. So can you see that many of us feel stifled? Republicans feel a little stifled to share with Democrats what they view and to talk about things. And then Democrats, I believe, also feel uncomfortable in talking sometimes of what they believe. And so you have this atmosphere of division and anger. And uh, let's keep going. Okay, so we are a nation divided, I repeat, not only by political parties, but by attitudes and behavior. The differences of opinions are ramped up and intensified. So what will happen if Donald Trump wins, President Trump? Well, Trump says that the future of U.S. and civilization is at stake. President Donald Trump issued a dire warning Friday about what would happen if Joe Biden is elected president in November, telling a crowd in Arlington, Virginia, that, quote, the future of our country and indeed our civilization is at stake. And so this is from The Independent. Just days ago, another former president, Barack Obama, delivered unprecedented criticism of Mr. Trump's administration at the Democratic Convention, warning the incumbent president, quote, will tear our democracy down if that's what it takes to win. Barack Obama, former president, said this as recorded in Independent article. Then the bulwark says, we worried Trump would endanger the U.S., but he's proved uh, even worse than we thought. Uh, Donald Trump inflames pre prejudices, inciting political, racial, and ethnic divisions that weaken our nation. He undermines the rule of law and dangerously labels journalists as enemies of the people. He solicited and continues to solicit foreign influence to assist his collection. He is, ero con he is corroding our institutions of governance and those that protect us. But our main point is that we fear for our country if Donald Trump is reelected. So do you see how things are being expressed on one side? Uh, notice the terminology and the name calling. Senator Tammy Duckworth, Trump is the coward in chief. Trump delivers blizzard of false claims in Pennsylvania speech attacking Biden. So notice there's the attacks and counterattacks. There's the name calling. Biden vows to end Trump's chapter of American darkness. So Biden vowed to end this chapter of American darkness as he accepted the Democratic nomination for president. So what will happen if Joe Biden wins? Well, he is uh, revolving his uh, campaign around the word united. You can even text united to their short number there. And the motto is build back better. And so the National Herald 
Is democracy really in danger in the U.S.? I never imagined that the United States would reach the point of being so divided for partisan reasons. Uh, he goes on to say, in short, some believe, some believe that if Biden wins, he will destroy America, crime will rise, the country will be filled with illegal immigrants, and the economy will sink. And on the other side, some believe that Trump, and then the article continues. But editorial, the difference between Biden and Trump is hope and light and love, according to DNC 2020, proved it. And so, as he put it, the United States is, being, is seeing a perfect storm of crises, a pandemic that has claimed more than 170,000 lives, economic hardship brought on by efforts to control the outbreak, and a reckoning over long festering racial inequities uh, and the existential threat of climate change. C climate change. And so notice, that's the job of a president, to represent all of us, not just our base or party, Joe Biden said. This is not a partisan moment. This must be an American moment. And I hear what he's saying. Joe Biden tells America Joe Biden can heal the divided country. Notice the word divided as he formally becomes the Democratic presidential nominee. Biden's pandemic challenge, a unified, notice the word, unified plan for a, notice the word, divided country. The way that you build public trust is that you tell the truth, says one health advisor. Trumping Joe's big night, Biden to formally accept nomination, which he's already done, DNC after president rips him from hometown. So I have sincere questions to ask you all. Will things calm down if President Trump is reelected? Will they calm down if Joe Biden is elected? Regardless of who becomes president for the next four years, I'm asking us, will things calm down? Will our country be more united? Will there be more confidence in government if President Trump has the next four years or Joe Biden has the next four years? I believe we can expect to see more social unrest and chaos if our country continues on this dangerous path of demeaning and attacking those who we disagree with. We are at a crossroads, everybody. Trump rips Biden for not talking about police, violent protests, and DNC acceptance speech. You know, conversations matter. We gotta be careful about using explosive language, exaggerated language, distorted language, toxic language on both sides of the political divide. And so we need to be careful how we use uh, labels and how we uh, do name calling. We have to be a peacemaker. Both sides deserve tolerance, courtesy, patience, listening, explain, uh, giving people an opportunity to explain their positions. Look, there are many Christians that are Republicans and many Christians that are Democrat. We must, and many Christians that are independent, we must have patience with one another. Christians are to be known for their love toward others. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit, according to Galatians 5, 22 and 23. And Jesus said in the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5, verse 9, He says that Christians are to be peacemakers. That's our role. That's what we are to be. So what does the Bible predict will happen to America in the last days? Well, first of all, many are asking these kind of questions. Will the poor be able to depend on health and Medicare or medical care? Is there any hope of one day overcoming our national debt? Will our military always be able to defend our freedom? Will we go to war soon with some country like Russia or China? Will our economy bounce back quickly or will we see it go into deeper, darker depression? Will COVID-19 be overcome soon or will it last for years to come? Will ferocious fires continue to consume the West? Will global warming continue to wreak havoc in America and on and on? So many questions about the future. But what does the Bible say about the future of the United States of America? What about the future of religious freedom in the United States of America? Congress, in the U.S. Bill of Rights, in the amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. In other words, stay out of worship, religious worship. You know, don't, don't be telling people how to worship. 
So Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. What does the Bible say about the future of America? Now, I have a number of videos where I have covered uh, about the United States in Bible prophecy. But anyway, Revelation 13, 11 and 12. Then I saw another beast coming up out of the earth. This is the United States of America. And he had two horns like a lamb. In other words, there's some Christian character traits to how it uses its power. Horn denotes power. A beast, this second beast represents a kingdom known as the United States of America. And it would have two horns, that is two sides of power, or two phases of power. Religious and political power comes from the fact that these are divided. And so spoke like a dragon. How does a nation speak? Through its laws and decrees. So will there be a law in the future that has to do with religious worship? Notice the next verse. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast. The first beast is the Roman church. And that's what the Protestant reformers believe. And I have messages about the Antichrist. I have one that I did recently. You can go on, check it out. And I hope you subscribe to our channel. Hit the bell icon. I hope you share and like our videos. And he exercises all the authority of the first beast in his presence and caused it the earth and those who dwell in it to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. All right, so the United States is going to enforce a worship that, rep that reflects a respect for the first beast, the Roman church. So what type of worship is being embraced by both Protestants and Catholics? Sunday observance. Now we can go to church seven days a week. Sunday worship came from the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Don't take my word for it. Do some homework and look on my channel. He performs great signs so that he even makes fire come down in heaven and the earth in the sight of men and deceives those who dwell in the earth by those signs which he was granted to do in the sight of the beast, telling those who dwell in the earth to make an image to the beast who was wounded by the sword and lived. So the image of the beast means that church and state will unite. And that right there, by church and state uniting, that right there forms an image of the beast. When church pressures the state to enforce a national Sunday law, that's the image to the beast. He causes all both small and great, rich and poor, free and slave to receive a mark on the right hand or on their foreheads. It's symbolic. And then no one may buy or sell except one who has the mark or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. So there will be economic sanctions, economic boycott imposed on those who refuse to go along with the worship that came from the first beast, Sunday worship. And so there's an end time warning that must go to all the world. Then a third angel followed them saying with a loud voice, if anyone worships the beast, notice the issue is worship. And it's going to look upon as being Christian worship that came from the Roman church. Well, what kind of worship came from the Roman Catholic Church that is not true worship, but is actually counterfeit? If anyone worships the beast in his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, he himself shall also drink the wine of the wrath of God. Now, nobody has the mark of the beast yet. It hasn't been enforced yet. He himself shall also drink the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out full strength into the cup of his indignation, he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment descends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast and his image and whoever receives the mark of his name. And then the Bible spotlights those who are preaching these messages around the world. Here is the patience, the endurance of the saints. Here are those who keep the commandments of God, including the day of worship of the Sabbath, because that's right there in the Ten Commandments. Ten fingers, ten toes, and God gave us not only ten fingers, ten toes, He gave us ten commandments. Here are those who keep the commandments of God. In other words, they keep the seventh-day Sabbath. You need to find a church, and we can help you find a church that keeps the seventh-day Sabbath. All you need to do is 
text the word Bible to 74121. Text the word Bible to 74121. Or email us at amazingprophecies at gmail.com. And you can call us also. So notice, God's last day people who have the faith of Jesus uplift all of the commandments of God, including the seventh day Sabbath. Then I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to those who dwell on the earth, to every nation, tribe, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him who made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and the springs of water. So either you're going to, according to the Bible, be worshiping the beast or worship the Creator. Well, what day honors our Creator? Our Creator in the Garden of Eden gave Adam and Eve long before there was an existence of a Jew, long before that time, right there at the beginning in Genesis 2, God created Adam and Eve and He gave them the Bible Sabbath, the day of worship. Now we can worship God every single day. We can go to church every single day if we want, but there's only one day that God said represents um, a re uh, worship of our Creator. God made a day holy, the seventh day of the week, Saturday. He made that holy from sundown Friday night to sundown Saturday night. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, says the Lord. So shall your descendants in your name remain. And there shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to what will they do on the Sabbath? Worship before me, says the Lord. Look here, everybody. Do you want to follow the example that Jesus gave us? Jesus went to church on the Sabbath. What did the apostles do? Acts 13, Acts 16, Acts 17, Acts 18 make it very clear that the apostles and the early believers, Christian believers, would gather together on the Bible Sabbath to worship our Creator and worship Jesus as our personal Savior, to worship God through Jesus Christ. Jesus is the active agent in creation. The Bible says that God created everything through Jesus Christ. So even in the earth made new, the meek shall inherit the earth, Matthew 5, 5, we will continue to keep the seventh day Bible Sabbath. And so right now, if you can see, God wants us to keep all 10 of the commandments. Just go ahead and comment below. I believe God wants us to keep the commandments of God. Remember, Jesus said, if you love me, keep my Commandments, John 14, 15. Now you say, might say, Mark, this is so new to me. I, I didn't know this. Well, that's why I watch my videos. I go into detail about this and receive the book, The Mark of the Beast. The Mark of the Beast. I've got uh, that on here as well. Well, let me read a couple more scriptures. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger <clears throat> who is within your gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. That is one of the Ten Commandments. That's the fourth commandment. God says, remember the Sabbath, that's Saturday, to keep it. And in the last days, the last days, the dragon, the devil, was enraged with the woman, the church, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring, the remnant, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. So the devil hates the believers who keep the seventh-day Sabbath, who keep all the Ten Commandments. The devil hates the Sabbath because it's a sign of allegiance to God as our Creator. And so even Jesus, in his death, rested in the tomb on the seventh day Sabbath. The day after the Sabbath, the day of the resurrection, is a special day. But the day before is the Sabbath. So all days are special in a sense because we can say about any day, this is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Psalms 118 verse 24. But there's only one day that's the seventh day Sabbath and that's Saturday. And so Blessed are those who do His commandments that they may have the right to the tree of life and may enter through the gates into the city. I want to urge you to call us right now. Call us for prayer, Bible questions. Uh, if you want to donate, you can do that all over the phone as well if you want. 833-211-4878. 833-211-4878. 
or you can email us amazingprophecies at gmail.com or text the word Bible to the number 74121. You get a link to a church preaching what we are near you and also a link to a free online Bible course to learn more. So look here, everybody. I want to pray with you. Father in heaven, we pray that you would help us to obey all of your commandments by faith in Jesus. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. So this is Mark Fox signing off for now. Remember, Jesus loves you. He died for you. He's coming for you. And he says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If it's your desire to keep the commandments of God, just write down below, Jesus, I love you and I want to obey you. Jesus, I love you and I want to obey you. So this is Mark Fox signing off for now. Remember, Jesus loves you.